Hi everyone. Now we are in example 3 of lesson 3. In this example we have a single phase transformer whose operating power is 100 kV amps and it has 3000 volts of voltage in the primary winding and 120 volts in the secondary winding. The frequency is 50 Hz and the number of turns in the secondary winding is 100. Then they ask the value of the primary and secondary current. The primary current can be obtained by dividing the apparent power by the primary voltage. That is, remember that you have to change the units to both the amps and you need to divide by the voltage in the primary winding, which was 3000 volts. So that means that you will get a result of approximately 33.33 amps, .33 and that is the current in the primary circuit. For obtaining the secondary current, you have to divide the apparent power of the transformer by the voltage in the winding. So that is 10,000 volt amps divided by 220 volts, which is the voltage in the secondary winding, which gives a result of approximately. So these are the currents in the primary and secondary windings. Next thing that they ask in this example is the maximum magnetic flux. If you remember, when we have systems supply in AC, as we suppose that it is the case here, the magnetic flux is going to follow this expression. As they are talking about the maximum magnetic flux, then the maximum value will be when this cosine is equal to 1 or minus 1, okay? So at the end, the maximum value in absolute value will be square root of 2 voltage, number of turns, and divided by the angular velocity. The magnetic flux is going to be calculated in the secondary circuit because it is in the secondary circuit where we have the induced magnetic flux, okay? So there we are going to introduce the voltage in the, the, voltage in the secondary winding and we are going to divide by the number of turns, which was 1000, and the angular velocity, which was 2 pi multiplied by the frequency in Hz. You are going to get a result of approximately this in Webers, which is 9.903101 Webers. So this is the maximum magnetic flux. So that means that the voltage in the secondary circuit divided by the voltage in the primary circuit must be the same as the number of turns in the secondary winding divided by the number of turns in the primary winding. So there, if you want the number of turns in the primary winding, you will have number of turns in the secondary winding multiplied by voltage in the primary circuit divided by voltage in the secondary circuit. That is 100, and here voltage in the primary was 3000 volts divided by voltage in the secondary which was this. So the number of turns is approximately 1,364 turns. So this is example 3 of lesson 3. Hi everyone, here we are solving example 4 from lesson 3, which is magnetic circuits and electrical machines. So here we need to obtain the equivalent circuit referred to the primary winding. First, we have the results of the open circuit test, which was carried out in the primary winding, in the primary circuit. So we have the rated voltage of the primary, 220 volts, and we also have the low load current, which is 2 amps, and we have the power here, or the power of the losses, which is 150 volts. For obtaining the equivalent circuit here in the open circuit test, we will obtain two magnitudes, which are the resistance of iron losses and the magnetizing reactance. So first, for obtaining the resistance of iron losses, you need to divide the square of the voltage by the active power measured 
in the open circuit terms. So that the square of the voltage divided by the power losses will give a value of the resistance of iron losses equal to this one expressed in ohms. We can also obtain the current of iron losses. The current of iron losses by applying the Ohm's law will be the voltage in the primary circuit divided by the resistance of iron losses. The voltage in the primary circuit is 220 volts divided by the resistance of iron losses, which is 322.67 ohms, which gives an approximate value of the current of iron losses equal to 0.682 ohms. Now that we have the current of iron losses and we also have the non load current, we can obtain the magnetizing current by doing a square root of the no load current to the square minus the current of iron losses to the square. That gives a value for the magnetizing current of 2 to the square minus 0, 6, 8, 2 to the square will give an approximate value of 1.88 amps. So the magnetizing reactance will be the voltage in the primary winding divided by the magnetizing current, that is 220 volts divided by 1.88 amp, amps, which gives an approximate result of 117.02 ohms. In this example, we also have the results of the short circuit test, which was carried out in the secondary winding. So we have that the short circuit voltage is 10 volts, the short circuit current is 26.32 amps, and the power, the measured power, was 75 volts. First, what we need to do, as the equivalent circuit that we need to calculate is referred to the primary winding, we need to transform these magnitudes to the primary. As the transformation ratio is the ratio between voltages in the primary and secondary, you have 220 divided by 308, which is approximately this. Okay? The voltage ratio U1 divided by U2 will be current 2 divided by current 1. That means that current 1 will be current 2 divided by the transformation ratio. So if we measured a short circuit current of 26.32 amps in the secondary winding, that means that the value that we would have measured in the primary winding 4546 amps approximately. Well, you need to know that the power is constant in the primary and secondary winding, okay? So this could be the same as the power measured in a, in a short circuit test in the primary winding. So then, the resistance in the primary winding, the, the short circuit resistance in the primary winding, will be the short circuit power divided by the square of the short circuit current in the primary winding. Now that we have the resistance, the short circuit resistance, we can get the value of the reactive power in a short circuit test, which will be obtained with this expression, which is the voltage multiplied by the current to the square, this represents the apparent power, minus the active power to the square, all of them in the primary winding. So the voltage in the primary was 220. The current in the primary was this one to the square minus the active power was 75 to the square. So the reactive power in the short circuit test in the primary winding. <clears throat> now that we have this, the short circuit reactance in the primary winding will be the reactive power divided by V square of the current, okay? So this is this reactive power divided by V square of this current. 
all these calculations from the no load test and the short circuit test led to the following equivalent circuit. So here you have the magnetizing reactants, which was this expressed in ohms, and the resistance of iron losses, which was this, and they are in parallel. And here we have the short circuit resistance, which was this, and the short circuit reactance. All of the values are related to the primary winding. In example 5, we need to use the same information from example 4, and they ask the voltage in the secondary winding when the primary winding is being supplied at 220 volts at full load, and the load has a power factor of 0.8 inductive. Then you need to know that the approximate relation between the primary and the secondary voltages at full load will be the following. So there you have that the voltage in the primary winding is going to be M, which is the voltage ratio, and it was, as you know in the previous example, 0.579. U2 is the voltage in the secondary that they ask. This is the resistance in the short circuit test. I2 prime is I2 divided by the transformation ratio. And I2 is going to be the apparent power divided by the rated voltage. The apparent power in this example was 10,000 voltage amps. And the rated voltage in the secondary winding is 380 volts, which gives a current of 26.32 amps. And with that value of I2, I2 prime will be 26.32 amps. We need to transform that divided by transformation ratio. So we will have a current in the primary of 45.46 amps. So then you have that here, the power factor. Here, the uh, short circuit reactants, the same current, and the sine of the angle. So then, we can introduce the values. Voltage 1 is 220 volts, transformation ratio. Here you have the voltage that you want to calculate. The resistance and reactance of short circuit test were obtained in example 4. Current uh, I2 prime was this one. The power factor was 0. The reactance from example 4 was 0. 0.122. Current of 45.46. And then the sign of the angle. If you know if the cosine of the angle is 0. 0.8, the sign of the angle would be 0. 0.6. Okay? So 0. 0.6. So in this equation, if you solve it for U2, you will get that U2 is 371.96 volts. So that means that this is going to be the effective voltage that you are going to have in the secondary winding in this equation.